Hello, welcome to episode 149 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 21st of January. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, I have some dressmaking, I then have a section where I tell you about my confessions, which is naughty things that I've purchased. <laughs> And it is mainly dressmaking themed this week. I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and then I have information on my shop update. And this week's shop update is this Friday at 7pm and I'll be introducing February yarn clubs and another new colourway and a new bag. So if you want to hear more about those, stay till the end of the podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, crochet hooks as well, clover ones and also bag making supplies such as wadding and fabrics etc. So we have a couple of make-alongs going on both in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and you can use the hashtag on Instagram or just chat in the Ravelry thread. They are the craft 20 a day which is working on 20 minutes a day or whatever time you can spare really on something that you really want to get finished by the end of the year. It doesn't have to take all year to be honest just something that takes a little bit longer than the normal project you work on or something that's taken you longer <laughs> and that you want to get finished and you're just working at it a little bit each day to get it done so that's over in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and you can use the hashtag craft 20 a day and I'll pop the hashtags in the description bar down below so I've also decided to have another make along over in the Ravelry group and that is going to be all to do with the yarn clubs. So if you've purchased one of my yarn clubs including the sock sets or the mini sets come over to the Ravelry group and share what you've been making and I'm going to draw prizes just to say a bit of a thank you to everybody who's purchased them and that will run till the end of the year so you've got plenty of time to enter what you've been making. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? So I have an object to show you that I actually showed finished before and this one was knitted by Adam's mum but I have blocked it now and it has got the most gorgeous drape to it. I just love how blocking things really finishes them off nicely and you can see that the lacy bit has opened up a little bit more and you can see the pattern a little bit better even though it's completely black. <laughs> So this is the pull drop shawl and it's by Greta Menson and it is beautiful. So it's a crescent shaped shawl and it's knitted with basically two whole skeins of four ply yarn. So I did say that Adam's mum knitted this for me because she wanted something to do as we're, we've got lockdown. And the yarn is Juniper Moon, Harriet Fine and it's in the black colourway and she had 30 grams left of the second skein so it's almost took two full skeins of yarn. But isn't that gorgeous? I love it. So it's all blocked out and ready to wear so I need an event to go to to be wearing my new shawl. I think it would be nice to wear over a little posh dress just like this <laughs> so we need somewhere to go out now when we are allowed out so that's the first thing I wanted to show you so secondly I have another finished object to show you so last week I showed you that I'd knitted one sock but now I have finished the pair Ta -da! so these are a very simple sock that I basically used my simple top down sock pattern but I just did rib all the way down the leg and then just down the front of the foot to make them fit a little bit more snugly so that pair's finished ready for Adam to wear I have looked in his sock drawer there is hardly any space now for socks so I better not knit too many <laughs> I think he just needs a couple of Christmas pairs now so these are knitted in a yarn that I picked up from Yarningham a couple of years ago and there was no label to it so I have completely forgotten what the shop was but it is a gorgeous sort of very dark black teal yarn. Let's give you a bit of a close up of the colour. There we are, that's more true. It's not as dark as it looks when it's further back but they are lovely. Really glad I decided to just do a plain sort of, well ribbed, but a simple simple socks so that I didn't have to um, do cables in this really dark yarn <laughs> but I'm glad they're finished and he's got another pair of socks to keep him snugly warm I have another finished object to show you 
So, you'll be very proud of me. I have finished one of my Make Nine projects. So this is the Every Bit Cowl by Stephanie Lotvin. And it is gorgeous. Love, love, love these cables down the front, some textured stitches and some lace and then some rib at the bottom. So I used some gorgeous red yarn that I got from Cartreff Yarn. That's a company that Zoe from Pins and Needles and also Jenny from Owl About Yarn Run. And it's yarn that's sourced from Wales and dyed in Wales. I think Jenny dyes them. And this particular colourway is Drake. It's 100% non-superwash Welsh DK and there's 205 metres for 100 grams. I was a bit low on yarn for the end of the cowl but it doesn't really matter. I just cast it off a little bit sooner because it's just it's nice just to have that amount of rib. I don't think it needs any more but the pattern did tell you to do a few more rows but it does say to just adjust the pattern to use every little bit of yarn that you have. So the back of the pattern goes up like this, which I think is fabulous because it sort of fits around your neck. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like on. Oh, love this shape. I think it's a lovely shape to wear with a coat and you know that it's not going to fly off like shawls can sometimes do. I did notice that on the top of the cowl, because it started off in a sort of shawl method, it does lay a bit strangely if you have the top bit out like that. But if you tuck it in, I really like the way it looks. Ta-da! So it's a lovely, lovely pattern. So this yarn, Cartreff yarn, is quite a rustic, non-superwash yarn. So not everybody could wear it right next to their skin. But I think in terms of around my neck, I think I'll be fine. I did originally buy the yarn thinking that I'd knit a hat. But actually, I have discovered that I'm more sensitive on my forehead for some reason than my neck. And it's not actually touching my neck that much. It just um, gives you a little bit of warmth over the top of your clothes, really. So if I did become sensitive to it, I think I could still wear it. Rather than having a hat that I know that would I'd have... I'd have sensitive issues on my forehead. But there we go, isn't that lovely? Ta-da! And what else have I got on my needles, you ask? <laughs> I have been working on my mittens. So these are a colour work mitten and they are going to be gorgeous. Well, they're mitts because they haven't got fingers in. They've just got um, a short fingerless thumb gusset um, and then they just go to about here on your hand so that is going to look lovely once it's finished. I'll pop a picture on the screen of what they're supposed to look like when they're finished and I've obviously started this leafy bit up here but then there's a bird at the top which looks fantastic and on the back of the mittens there are some little diamond shapes which I love knitting. I find that the repetitive nature of this part of the pattern is just lovely to knit on. So this is called the Mayfield Mitts Pattern by Erica Husser and this is one of my Make Nine as well. So once I finish these I'll have ticked two things off my Make Nine list for this year. I always start off like this and then by about August I'm panicking because I haven't started enough. <laughs> but there we go. I am knitting these on higher higher flyers because I find that because I, well, I do really love magic loop but when I'm doing colour work I find that when I'm coming around the corner here I end up with a really tight edge so actually the flyers are a little bit better because you can straighten it out as you go in so if you're starting to work this side you can sort of flatten it out. I have got a little bit of a crease but I think that'll block out really easily and I'm enjoying knitting on those. I have in the past knit mittens on 9 inch circular needles but I do find that my hands cramp up a little bit. I just think that these are a little bit easier to do the colour work on as an alternative to sort of magic loop. They're a sort of cross between magic loop and DPNs because you've got one needle on each side and then you have a working needle um, which you work each side at a time. So I have got a question in the Ask Me Anything thread so I will be demonstrating those in the Ask Me, Ask Me Anything section so that you can see how I knit with them exactly. 
So the yarn that I'm using for these is Phenol Garn. So those are the yarns that I'm using. And they're Phenol Garn Rama. And I picked those up a couple of years ago from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So that is all my knitting that I've got to show you. But I do have some dressmaking. So if there are some sections that you're not really interested in in the podcast, you can go in the description box and there's a contents list of all the different sections. And you can click on the little timestamp to skip to that stage so that if you're not interested in the knitting, for instance, then you can just skip to the dressmaking section. So next is my dressmaking section. And I have my fuel skirt to show you. I have I haven't put it on Barbara because it's just difficult to show you a skirt just on Barbara so I thought I'd hold it up and then I'll show you some footage of me wearing it in the lounge prancing around the lounge <laughs> so this is a lovely pattern by closet core patterns and they used to be called closet case but now they're closet core and I have chosen view B of the pattern which is a sort of wrap over skirt with a pocket at the side which is very very cool and the fabric that I used was a beautiful cotton and linen mix and I picked it up from Rainbow Fabrics and they basically sell sort of end of line dead stock fabrics which are then um, sold at really quite a cheap reasonable price and it's lovely to be able to try out this pattern in a really reasonable priced fabric. So this pattern's got three different views, view A, B and C and this is view B which is the wrap over version and it has basically a button on one side so that opens up and it has got a really good coverage um, in that it really folds right over the front panel from both sides this is the inside of the garment and you can see that I've done French seams on all the seams there is a bit where I've used there's some overlocker thread because I had to join some fabric together because I was so short I'd got two meters and I couldn't get the pocket piece into the in one full piece so I pieced them together and I just used the overlocker because I didn't think that I was going to be doing French seams and I did in the end but there's a massive pocket inside which is brilliant so I used the size 24 um, in the pattern and I basically used the pattern as it is apart from one modification I just increased the length of the back panels by an inch just to give me a little bit of a larger bum um, extension there and it is a lovely lovely skirt the only complaint I have is that actually I'd much rather the pocket be on the other side so what I'm going to do next time is reverse the panels so that I have the pocket on my right hand side because I'm right handed and I think that'll be a bit more useful. So I have some footage of me prancing around the living room in the skirt. Just bear in mind that the t-shirt and the leggings don't really go with it at the moment. I think I need to make myself a nice black v-neck t-shirt to go with this or something that's black with a floral print on it or something. So I'll pop that in here. So I now have my confession section, which is also related to dressmaking. So I thought it would fit lovely um, in with today's podcast. I think it was two weeks ago when I mentioned I'd got an order from Rainbow Fabrics. And I have got another order from Rainbow Fabrics, <laughs> which, I all, which I actually mentioned two weeks ago. And these fabrics I've actually washed all ready to use. So for a while I've wanted to try a double gauze version of the indigo dress. So I've made several indigo tops which I showed you on my make nine for last year. But I wanted to make a dress version and I've seen a few that have been made in this double gauze fabric. And I didn't want to spend too much on it because I know um, that I wasn't sure about it being too bulky where you gather all the fabric in. I know that Shauna from the Sewist Faction said that she just reduced the the sort of skirt panel of the dress when she used double gauze on hers. So I might have to do that. So we shall see. So I saw this on the Rainbow Fabrics website and it was very, very inexpensive. Something like £4 a metre. So I've got three metres of this to try out the indigo in the double gauze fabric. 
and if I like it I might get some of the Atelier Brunette um, black uh, double gauze with a little silver embroidery on it I like that <laughs> so I wow well, you have to buy things when you see them don't you see I I saw the picture on the rainbow fabrics of this and the picture on the website was really sort of glary and you couldn't really see um, what it was really like properly but I thought I reckon that is really nice satin fabric that I could use to make an Upton dress have another fancy dress <laughs> to go to parties in because I haven't been to a party for so long next year I'm hoping that the parties will start again <laughs> and I thought that this would be a perfect dress in pink little sort of teardrop patterns when I first got this through before I'd washed it because I've washed it now ready to use it it was shinier and the handle on the fabric was very stiff I washed it and it's lovely now really really lovely handle on it. it's really really soft it's quite a fine satin fabric but I just think that would make a lovely Upton dress for a party so I've got to have some parties next year if not it might be a zoom party but at least I'll look nice so that's that one and there was another risky fabric as well so again on the party dress theme I'd seen this sparkles <laughs> so this is a jersey that it's really lovely and stretchy and it's got little sequins on it look at those so I saw this on the website and sometimes you can't really tell sequins whether they, you're going to like them unless you see them in real life. So I thought I'm going to risk it and I bought three metres of this to make either a Joni dress or some sort of stretchy dress for parties because it'll be not only will it be nice and sparkly but it'll be stretchy as well. So if there's a buffet I'm all right. <laughs> So that's that one. On the inside of the fabric it's like a black, you can see it's like a black polyester so it's not going to be the most breathable fabric but for an evening out somewhere. And then I just saw this and I thought well I could always do with some more viscose so I got a few metres of this and I think they actually sent me four metres instead of the three metres I ordered which is absolutely lovely. And I thought Oh yes, a nice dress in this would be really pretty. I'm go I'm going for lots of reds recently. I thought that would be really nice as a as a, a really long maxi dress. I think we shall see which pattern I choose. Though there's loads of lovely dress patterns I want to make this year. So um, watch this space. So then there was a sale at Sherwood Fabrics, and there was twenty five percent off. So. It was rude not to buy the things that I'd had on a list for ages, waiting for there to be a really good sale. So I then went ahead and purchased my little collection of fabrics. And I feel that these are sort of like a little capsule wardrobe, these ones. So you can sort of see what I mean. So number one, well, the first thing I wanted to buy was some Cobra Corsage in the cotton lawn fabric. So I, hold, I had purchased some Cobra Corsage before on some viscose crepe jersey, but I think the viscose crepe jersey from um, Lady McElroy, I just don't think it's a very durable fabric. And I made a t-shirt out of it and it went really bobbly because I wore it loads already. Well, only a few times really, but I think because I wear a pinny when I'm dyeing yarn in the garage, <laughs> it sort of rubbed on it a bit. So I've now got some really lovely Lady McElroy cotton lawn in the Cobra Corsage. And I know that the cotton lawn is a lovely durable fabric for Lady McElroy. So, and it's got snakes on it. It's got butterflies. I just think that that is a lovely, lovely fabric. And I thought that I could make a penny dress from this. And I thought that it would be ideal to go for a nice tea and cake in. <laughs> I keep planning all these trips and we can't actually go anywhere yet. We shall see when it happens. And I had seen this fabric on another Sewy podcast and I just had to have some. So this is the Lady McElroy and it is the Florida Narcissa I think it's called. And just love, love, love this. So lovely and tropical 
I, I'm not 100% sure on what I am going to make, but I did think at the time that I'd make another penny dress. I was obviously going penny dress mad when I purchased this, but I bought two and a half metres. So that actually there's pro probably a number of dresses that I could make from this one, but it looks a little bit tropical, but I do like it having a dark background on it as well. So that's the second one I bought. So those are the dresses. And then I was thinking, right, I need to be practical now. I need some more skirts. And I was talking about earlier me making more fjord skirts, but in a different view. And I bought some gorgeous, really lightweight denim in a grey colourway. Because I thought, well, that would make a lovely skirt. Then I could wear lots of different tops with it. And that would make a nice addition to my wardrobe. So I bought some of that. And then also for a skirt, I bought some of this foliage canopy by Lady McElroy. And it, this I've had my eye on for ages. So I almost bought the sort of viscose with it again. But I did actually buy the, the linen chambray version this time. Which I've never tried the linen chambray for the Lady McElroy fabrics. And it is quite a nice drapey fabric. I'd say that it is a very fine linen, but I just think that's going to be a lovely skirt and with black t-shirt, I was thinking. So, of course, I had to purchase some black jersey to make a black t-shirt to go with it. <laughs> so, the black jersey, I thought, would be lovely to make a nice... I need a v-neck t-shirt, I think, and I think the v-neck would go really nicely with this skirt and also grey denim as well so this is my sort of capsule idea <laughs> so I did actually get two meters of this because I thought actually I could um, I could either use it as a contrast sleeves to go with another pattern if I get a little bit extra and I need one and a half meters if I was going to do a sort of long sleeve version so I shall see exactly what length of sleeve I choose but the cashmere at Concord t-shirt has got lots of different options to do like a v-neckline a round neckline and different lengths of sleeves so so that that's going to be a cashmere at Concord. Um, I just thought that I could do with some more sort of t-shirts that were sort of plainer really and I saw this this is a navy with a white stripe on and I thought that that would go really nice with the denim skirt material as well. Um, I think this is a this one is a Lady McElroy jersey um, which is this is a this is a cotton bamboo jersey, I think it is. Um, and I can't remember what the... I think this might be a Lady McElroy as well, because I seem to go Lady McElroy mad on this order. Um, but I just got one metre of this one to do a short sleeve t-shirt, and I'm planning on doing another v-neck as well. I realised that I love v-neck t-shirts, and I really haven't made any, which is just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> so the next thing I've got to show you is some beautiful beautiful lady mcelroy visco chalet fabric and this has got this has got um swans on it i think it's called signet's flight or something like that um i will link them in the description bar down below and um, this is going to be an indigo top because i just love the indigo top i know that it fits me really well and it's really really comfortable so that's going to be one of those it's got a lovely sort of very deep blue background on it and I've had my eye on that for a while so I had to get it <laughs> so that's my sort of capsule wardrobe which is basically me just being really naughty buying all the fabrics uh, <laughs> so as well as my lovely fabrics I had a beautiful gift from a lovely friend of some lovely yarn that is sparkly so that I could knit some socks for Adam for Christmas so that'll be absolutely perfect I'm going to be knitting those with, for him before next Christmas. I might even cast them on very soon. So those are going to be lovely. So thank you ever so much, Julianne. And we've that's all my confessions for this week. It's not that bad, is it? Well, it is, yeah. It is really, really naughty. <laughs> so I've got two questions from the Ask Me Anything thread um, on Ravelry. And the first one is from Diane. And Diane was asking me, how do I knit on the flyers? She wants to sort of see me knitting um, on the camera so she can see exactly how I position the needles as I'm knitting with them. Because they look a bit weird, don't they, with the with the two needles in different directions. So I shall take a clip of me knitting with those needles now and pop it in here so that you can see. So these are the higher, higher flyers. I've got one needle at the back of the work, one needle at the front of the work. And 
I'm going to knit across this needle here. I'm going to engage the top needle. And I am doing two colour colour work, but to start with, I'm just going to knit with, with one colour just to show you how I'm starting off. So. And you can see that I'm working over the top of this needle here. But I do tend to do two different sort of grips as I'm knitting. Because this piece is wide enough here, I can work over the top on this side. And the needles sort of just hang down to start with. But then I tend to change my grip and put it so that the lower needle is then bent up in my grip when I get further along. And you can see how I'm further along the row here, I'm tending to knit with the lower needle over my hands again now. So there we are, I've knitted across one needle, I'm just turning it over and doing the same on the other side. It looks slightly more complicated because this is two colour colour work um, but once you've got the hang of holding the needle um, from the lower side it's quite easy to use. So I had another question from lovely Tracy and she was asking me how on earth do I divide my time between sort of getting all the work done for the shop and also getting enough craft done to show on the podcast each week. Well I don't know how I do it Tracy to be honest. <laughs> I fly by the seat of my pants most of the time so I try to normally start work um, for the shop work at seven o'clock in the morning obviously I don't have to go anywhere so I can work start working straight away and quite often I'll work in my pajamas for about an hour which is always good <laughs> I tend to work until I've done the orders that I need to post really so sometimes I end up working till really late at night so with the advents for instance I was working till sort of 11 o'clock at night just to get everything done and sorted so that I didn't sort of disappoint anybody by posting things out too late and also Tracy was asking me how on earth do I get the time to cook food and clean and things well the truth is Adam cooks all the dinners <laughs> Because I get so busy with the shop, I say, Adam, can you cook something for tea? And he does, bless him. And he's very good at doing washing up and things. I must admit, sometimes my cleaning of the rest of the house gets a bit neglected, but I then have a, a bit of a, um, a mad clean like I did this weekend. Um, but I do really enjoy making things for the shop and also I I can't sit there without something in my hands. So in the evening, even if I'm tired, I'll pick up some knitting. And that is sometimes why I tend to pick up the simpler projects just because I'm tired after a long day of making stuff for the shop. Luckily I've got Adam because there's no way I'd be able to do it without him and if I had children or anything there's no way I'd have the time to be able to do all these things as well. <laughs> so there we go. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that are as busy as me but I do really enjoy working from home and working for myself. So that's the, the Ask Me Anything question sorted. Now we're on to the shop update section. So I've got some exciting things to share with you. So first of all, the yarn clubs will be for sale for February, this Friday at 7 p.m. GMT. And they're basically a sock set that is from the music from the movies theme. So I pick a song from a film that I really like and I dye something according to that sort of inspiration. And then I'll give you some information on the film and the song that I've chosen. I also do a minis club which is basically 520 gram minis and it's based on the theme of a mixtape. So I randomly pick five of my favourite songs and then I dye them up as a little set. So what I'm trying to do is pick songs that the colourways seem to sort of go together as a little set rather than just being sort of random colours. Even though the songs are random, the colours are supposed to sort of go together as the five colourways all together. So that's those. I also have some exciting Valentine's theme products to show you as well. So I have a new colourway and this is going to be a sock set but you don't have to have the sock set if you don't want to and this one is going to be called Always. So it's based on the Bon Jovi song Always. I just love it. I think it's the most romantic song ever. <laughs> it's one from my childhood that I absolutely love. 
so I had to dye a yarn up especially for Valentine's Day so there is some reds pinks and purples in there and I've paired with it a really dark purple which has got some grey tones in it so that's the sock set but you can have this on any of the bases that you choose I dye everything to order so you can choose it in a DK if you want to or on fluffy alpaca Siri alpaca you can choose whichever base you want so that's the yarn that is going to be available sort of as a permanent colourway but I'm having a bag that's a sort of special bag just for Valentine's Day and that's got always embroidered on it. It's not coming out really well on the camera but it says always and then if you look really closely I've done some free motion stitching around the heart and there's all some swirly patterns inside both of these hearts that I free motion stitched and then I free motion stitched this heart and the swirly patterns as well. So this fabric sort of reminds me of the 90s and tie-dye and Bon Jovi so that's why I created this design. So this particular one is a drawstring but I do offer the option of having a zip as well so it'll just look just like that without the two lines of stitching for the drawstring with a zip on the top. They are uh, box bottom bags, they are a good size for a two three skein project at least you could probably squeeze about five skeins in there if you really wanted to and then i free motion stitched crafthousemagic.go.uk and a little heart on the back the inside has got the same fabric as the lining and then i've done my normal two nice big pockets on the inside so that's what the box bottom looks like when it's filled and the drawstring one oops will look like that well, it's drawn up closed and with it being drawstring you can actually turn the top of the bag over like that if you want it to so you can sort of get access to your knitting a bit better I'm only going to do these in medium size and they're going to be a limited run I am also releasing some of the minis that I had for the advent last year so if you've got a 12 day advent calendar and you want to add to it you can um, purchase a couple of sets of these so first of all I basically designed them as a fade to knit my Cupid's Arrow advent wrap with so this is the first set it's got mainly pinks and browns in just I think this is probably my, one of my favourites and I've decided to name the little sets of six as a song that is sort of related to, to fade or change so this one is love changes everything because the colours change <laughs> that is my tenuous link and also because it's got some beautiful pink there I just thought that that was rem very reminiscent of that song so that's the first one that's love changes everything the second one has got some turquoises and greys and this gorgeous sort of yellowy green as well so this one's going to be called fade to grey um, so that's that set of six the next set i've named waterloo sunset as like a tropical sunset there it's got some golden and purple colours and some blue as well and finally these are Orinoco Flow I just thought that it was very apt for this, these colours um, because of the artwork on the album cover and also it's a flow of different colours so I've tried to use the names of the yarn that are sort of flow changes and fade and things like that so that they're all related to a gradient <laughs> hopefully you like them as much as i do so i'm also having some nine inch circular sets in the shop this week i've been looking at higher higher website waiting for them for them to be updated for a while now and they've got the nine inch circular ones back in stock so I was able to stock my shop with those this is the colour bag that I've got at the moment and I have restocked a number of other needle sets as well so if you are looking for one of these sock sets for the interchangeable needle sock sets or DPN sets I've got quite a bit of stock of all the different ones as well so check out the shop update on Friday 
So all those things I've talked about today will be in tomorrow's shop update, the 22nd of January at 7pm GMT. And I think that's all I've got to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in next week's podcast. Bye!